So we'll continue this conversation with Adrian Yamakis with us, founder of Strategic Wealth Capital. The committee is worried about reacceleration of inflation. So that still says a restrictive policy. Adrian, what, what do you say here? It's interesting because it's fairly clear whether or not there's one hike, uh, two or none, the Fed is much, much closer to the end of the tightening cycle than not. If we look at inflation, it's come down uh, 3%. It was over twice as much a couple of years ago. So as the Fed is measuring labor market and inflation, we can see that they're fairly quick and rapid tightening and rate hikes have been able to bring back the inflation and labor numbers remain strong. So it's a bit early to tell what will happen. But I think, uh, as you mentioned, a fair unanimous hold on the rate is pretty meaningful. Yeah, I mean, not, oh, this is the end of the rate hike cycle. We didn't hear that. Um, in fact, they're waiting on more data. They're watching everything, proceeding carefully, remaining rates uh, remain restrictive, uh, watching for inflation if it's going to go in the right direction and become tame disinflation something that they're watching i mean they say that um, the coming months would help to clarify the extent to which disinflation is continuing i mean what are your worries here because there are some worries if the fed raises even one more time that we are more likely to see a recession so different sectors of the economy react very very differently to inflation rate hikes Real estate, as we know, is extremely, extremely sensitive. So one reason there was a real estate bubble several years ago is because inflation, because interest rates had been kept low for so long. It had been about three and a half decades and the rapid tightening reversed that. But some think, I think it was a little quick for the economy to absorb. Uh, still necessary, but probably should have happened a bit sooner. And there are other sectors that because borrowing will become more expensive if there's another interest rate hike. So highly leveraged companies, certain sectors, because of that, I think the Fed has to be, is going to be very mindful about what parts of the economy will slow and how will that change? What will it do, for example, to the real estate market, which is still slowing, inventory is very low. And I think they're, they're just looking across the economy in general. Yeah, you talk about valuations and that valuations still favor an international and exposed portfolio in that sense, um, because they are making it very clear here that policy can stay at these levels for some time. So all those folks who are hoping for some cuts may be a little disappointed here. I'm seeing the market selling off a little bit after these minutes. Um, where do you see value? I had a client ask uh, last week, he said, I just don't see international going anywhere. Does it make sense? I know valuations and all the reasons, Adrian, that you've given for why we still hold developed and emerging markets. But if it hasn't worked for X number of years, is it going to? And I think that's an absolutely fair question. And the answer is absolutely. It absolutely makes sense to stay diversified internationally because what you pay for earnings matters. And if we look at the S&P, it's trading at a multiple that's higher than its average. It's 17 times. And if you and it's also trading much, much higher than, for example, international developed, which is about at, at about 11 times. So when you're looking for what are the values, what are where is there where are their favorable valuations? So the S&P is up, what, 19% this year, but investing, prudent investing is always forward looking. It's what do I need to pay for a dollar of earnings and how much am I paying for that? And abroad, there are a lot more reasonably priced, uh, excellent companies than there are on average domestically. And so at this point now, um, in this environment, because there are still folks who do like those international stocks and, and, and did manage to find some winners, um, it can be more challenging, particularly if you're less versed in that area. But um, assuming 
you know, we're back here at home and we're looking at um, the fixed income market, you're actually looking at longer duration for fixed income, right? I know everybody's running for a quick uh, 5%. What is it in the fixed income market that attract is attractive to you maybe for a longer duration? So I remember giving presentations about 14 years ago about uh, discussing specifically the danger of duration. So going out further, holding for longer maturity holdings, it's very counterintuitive, but now the opposite is the case. So right now for short term, three, three month, six month treasuries, they're yielding 5.4, 5.3%. Very attractive, but counterintuitively, because of where the yield curve is, if you buy, for example, a two-year treasury that's getting slightly under 5%, over the longer term, over a couple of years, you may actually be better off because you're locking in a higher yield for a longer period of time. And again, very counterintuitive. Normally, holding longer, you would be paid a higher rate for for the increase for the decreased liquidity that you're taking the higher the higher risk but in this case because we don't know what rates are going to do for some uh in some portfolios it makes sense to lock in a higher rate for treasuries and if you go further along in duration and maturity for clients who need income there are a lot of very very good well-priced uh, bonds that offer a significantly higher yield than they did a year or two ago. So there's still plenty of opportunity and in fixed income even further along than the next 12 months. And as we've gotten in retail numbers, um, which have been somewhat mixed and uh, specific, company specific to a certain extent, you actually are noting one thing, and that is about the consumer and the resiliency and what a consumer is and how strong they are. A final thought there, and that may keep us afloat, Adrian, right? Um, yes, it's interesting that we, high income households still have excess savings it's brought about by a few different things. Uh, Price Waterhouse Coopers is estimating that this spending this holiday season is going to be about 7% higher than a year ago. And part of it is we see the labor market is still very strong. Unemployment remains very, very low. The second is that we still have some post-pandemic savings uh, that remain to be spent. And there's a lot of, we're going into one of the highest spending seasons of the entire year. And from what we can see from a lot of online companies, they're very agile in terms of how they are marketing and pricing. It's very dynamic and they're very skilled at uh, encouraging, uh, encouraging us to be consumers. And I have a feeling that we're going to play our role very well this year. Yeah, it'll be interesting because I know that right now the um, National Retail Federation is anticipating 3 to 4% growth. I've had folks come on and think less or more, um, but we will see. Adrian Yamaki, thank you. Strategic Wealth Capital. Good to see you, Nicole.